Due to a slow increase in the global temperatures more ice is melting. Lakes and swamps are drying up and there is more desertification. This water ends up in the air and eventually in the oceans, causing sea levels to rise. What if we find more ways to store a lot more fresh water on land? The best option is to find a huge lake that was once a lot bigger and fill her up again. Some people refer to Chad as the dead heart of Africa, because it is so hot and dry. But the Ennedi Plateau in the northeast, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is known for its large collection of prehistoric rock art depicting cattle and even giraffes. Which is also true for neighboring Niger's Air Mountains. Chad and Niger's Tenere Desert once must have looked a lot different. What changed? The ASTA satellite data provides the digital elevation map used here. South of present-day Lake Chad. A remarkable feature can be seen which is the runoff of a huge lake. It is now called Mayo Kabi. This overflow fixed the level of the lake for a long time. Leaving a shoreline that is still visible at 321 meters above sea level. To the northwest of this outlet. There may have been another one at 367 meters. It cuts through a crest currently at 415 to 428 meters. Is this eroded crest an indication for the maximum water level? Or was it caused by waves and is 380 to 400 meters a more realistic maximum? That would mean the mountains near Mayo Kabi have eroded far more. Perhaps because it was so exposed to the prevailing winds from the northeast. Whatever the reason. What if we put a dam in the Mayo Kabi and a smaller one in the other? It creates a basin for a possible lake with an area of 800,000 square kilometer at 380 meters the biggest in the world. To the northwest. The mega lake Chad borders Niger's Tenere Desert. This desert is remarkably flat over a vast area. It may once have been a swamp. But let's assume that the lake is at 380 meters and the same for the water table in the Tenere. A water table is not a sharp separation between wet sand and the dry sand above. Many meters above this level the sand will be humid. The area of 0 to plus 50 meters above the water table, which is 170,000 square kilometer, will be suitable to grow plants varying from rice to deep-rooted trees. Year after year, a network of channels could be expanded to improve irrigation and expand the agricultural area. In addition, there is also a vast area from 0 to plus 50 meters, along the rest of the lake's shoreline. The total shoreline, including near the Tenere, is 4,300 kilometers which is more than double the length along the Nile in Egypt. Much of the wide area along this shore can also be used to grow crops. But there is not enough rain. So what if we increase the catchment area? In the Central African Republic, Congo Kinshasa and Congo Brazzaville, rain regularly causes flash floods. Several months a year there is too much rain. Can we dump it in Lake Chad? What if we built a dam directly north of Bambari? The area upstream of the dam will fill up. And at some point the water level will reach the lowest part of the surrounding mountains. That's in the north. The water will spill over into the Chari River which flows all the way to Lake Chad.
by constructing a new dam every few years. The catchment area gradually expands further by diverting water when certain water levels are exceeded. Ultimately, this proposed additional catchment area will be almost 400,000 square kilometer, with 600 cubic kilometer of rainfall a year. But downstream, at the capital Bangui it is estimated only about 130 cubic kilometer ends up in the Ubangi River. So only a maximum of 100 cubic kilometer can be channeled to Lake Chad. Another option is to pump water from the Ubangi to the Chari River. Or even from the Congo River which is the second largest river in the world. In the Democratic Republic of Congo and Congo Brazzaville, rain regularly causes flash floods. Several months a year there is too much rain. Can we dump it in Lake Chad? But diverting so much water will be too much to get the go-ahead from the DRC. Now it has plans to increase the capacity of its Inga hydroelectric power stations. But the DRC does not have the $80 billion to realize this plan. So what if we combine the two and find funds to pay them for the water that is diverted to Chad? There is a third option, probably bigger than the others, which is a phenomenon called air rivers. Near the equator, a lot of water evaporates, rising high in the air, and then flows in a relatively narrow strip of moist air to the north. The water that evaporates from the Atlantic near the southern coasts of West Africa moves roughly in a northeasterly direction because the Earth also rotates. At the end of March 2019, there were very intense rain showers in the Middle East and especially in Iran. Armin Desfali explained in the December Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society how the air river coming from this area was reinforced along the way by extra moist air from the Arabian Sea, Gulf of Aden and Red Sea. It had passed over Chad but caused no rain until it was driven up by the Zagros Mountains, which cooled the moisture-laden air and caused the torrential downpours. In Iran it caused $2.5 billion of damage and killed 76 people. How can we tap into this resource? We need to better understand this process. Because it could explain why Chad's basin was once large enough to have a mega lake Chad. That would mean that the water from the Ubangi or Congo River will not be needed forever. How big does the lake need to be to have a sufficient cooling effect? And how many trees and plants are needed? Since the air rivers can be seen in satellite images, at some point we may be able to speed up the process by irrigating at the right time. And other tricks to get extra cooling and extra evaporation to create an air river rain. Can we model this? So how big is the reservoir where we can store all this water? Lake Chad at 380 meters could hold over 47,000 cubic kilometer of water and probably a lot more. Because the sand and the sandstone below 380 meters elsewhere in the Lake Chad Basin Aquifer, including the Tenere, will also absorb water and along the shores there will be a vast area with irrigation and plants, allowing the lake to reach 380 meters creates another opportunity. Somewhere around the 380 meters level, the lake touches the edge of the Nubian sandstone aquifer system. It is the largest in the world with an area of over 2 million square kilometers in northeastern Chad, Libya, 
Egypt and Sudan. The dry Katara depression in northwestern Egypt cuts through its sandstone layers. This depression is 133 meters below sea level at its deepest. Studying the DEM and proposing a dam at the western edge will create a basin for a lake that can safely be filled to over 62 meters above sea level. With an estimated 7.55% space within the sandstone the aquifer could contain about 30,000 cubic kilometer and the Katara Lake itself 3,250 cubic kilometer of water. Perhaps there are subsurface cracks in the rocks at the location where Mega Lake Chad and the aquifer touch. It would explain how Katara Lake once could have existed. But when pipes like those of Libya's great man-made river project are used to transport the water, Going from 380 meters to the Katara depression it can be used to produce electricity. And from Katara it too will seep into the aquifer. In the west of Libya there is the northwest Sahara aquifer system. Which is over 1 million square kilometer in size and extends to Algeria and Tunisia and perhaps from there to another aquifer system that is in Algeria, Mali and Mauritania, where the Tamanrasid River flowed perhaps as recent as 5,000 years ago. And in Niger there is the Urheza Alumidan Basin, which lies just on the other side of a low mountain range in Niger and extends over 500,000 square kilometers. There is a need for more data. But the overall reduction in the global sea level rise will probably be substantially more than a first estimate of about 25 centimeters. All this water and plants will also release extra water vapor into the atmosphere, causing more rainfall in other areas. Those areas and the aquifers underneath will now also absorb and store even more water. But, especially the people of Chad would lose a huge part of their country including the capital in Jarmania. In Nigeria the major city of Maiduguri has to be relocated more than 80 kilometers to the southwest. This plan can therefore only be realized. If there is sufficient budget to generously compensate for the loss of property and the move to a new location, realizing this sea at level plan will lead to a reduction of the sea level rise and the capture of a lot of greenhouse gases.